Welcome back to The Lost Tactician. Picture this. A 13th century master carpenter stands before a massive oak beam destined for a cathedral roof, knowing his work must outlast not just his lifetime, but centuries of punishing rain, biting frost, and wood-boring beetles. No synthetic sealants, no chemical preservatives, just his knowledge, his tools, and a golden oil pressed from flax seeds. This is the story of how medieval craftsmen waged a silent war against decay itself, armed with an engineering marvel hidden in plain sight. You're about to discover that linseed oil wasn't just a finish, it was a sophisticated weapon in humanity's oldest battle against time. The silent battle of medieval timber. Imagine waking each morning to inspect your life's work, only to find fresh cracks threading through timbers, the tell-tale dust of powder-post beetles scattered below joints, or the spongy give of rot spreading through a load-bearing beam. This was the medieval architect's nightmare. Untreated oak might last thirty years in exposed conditions. Common pine, perhaps fifteen before structural integrity collapsed. Every cathedral spire, every bridge timber, every roof truss represented not just construction, but a desperate gamble against nature's relentless assault. Yet wood remained king of medieval construction, despite this fragility. Europe's vast forests provided abundance where stone quarries ran scarce. Oak and pine were workable with period tools, lightweight enough to span great distances, and possessed structural properties that made soaring Gothic heights possible. The challenge wasn't whether to use wood, but how to make it endure. Medieval builders understood they were locked in combat with invisible enemies, moisture that swelled and cracked fibres, fungi that turned solid heartwood to crumbling punk, and insects that could reduce a century-old beam to hollow shell in a generation. The unsung hero Linseed Oil's Hidden Science Enter linseed oil, extracted from flax seeds through cold pressing, a substance medieval craftsmen understood with an intuition that modern science now validates. This wasn't simple varnish slapped on surfaces. When applied properly, linseed oil performed molecular magic. Through capillary action, the oil penetrated deep into wood cellular structure, sometimes driven further by gentle heating that thinned the viscosity, allowing it to flow into microscopic spaces between fibres. Once inside, oxygen exposure triggered polymerization, a chemical transformation where liquid oil oxidized into a solid protective matrix bonded to the wood itself. Modern analysis of surviving medieval timbers reveals this genius clearly. The oil created a water-repellent barrier, not by sealing the surface like plastic wrap, but by filling the wood's porous structure with a hydrophobic substance that still allowed vapour exchange. This breathability proved crucial. It let wood expand and contract with seasonal humidity changes without trapping moisture that would breed rot. Medieval craftsmen couldn't name polymerization, but they observed its effects through generations of trial, error and accumulated wisdom. Lost knowledge unearthing medieval application techniques the process was meticulous, almost ritualistic. Craftsmen prepared boiled linseed oil by heating it with metal oxides or resins, accelerating the drying time from weeks to days. Application came in thin, carefully timed layers, each coat allowed to cure completely before the next. Brushes of hog bristle or wool rags worked the oil into every grain and fissure. For critical applications like ship hulls or exposed timber framing, they enhanced the oil with pine tar, that dark, viscous resin that added insect-repelling terpenes and superior water resistance. Fragmentary guild records and oral traditions passed through generations reveal regional variations. Northern craftsmen adapted their techniques for harsh Baltic winters, applying extra coats before the killing frost. Mediterranean builders thinned their oil with wine alcohol for deeper penetration in sun-baked hardened wood. These weren't random experiments, but 
sophisticated adjustments to local climate challenges, demonstrating practical chemistry that predated formal science by centuries. The legacy in stone and wood, enduring structures. Walk through Norway's Borgen Stave Church, constructed in the 1180s, its dark timbers still sound after more than eight centuries of mountain weather. Examine the preserved Viking ships in Oslo's museums. Their pine planks were treated with linseed and tar mixtures, wood that honestly should have rotted to nothing within decades of burial. These aren't anomalies, but, you know, testimonies to preservation techniques that often outperform modern synthetic treatments, which can fail within 30 years by trapping moisture and preventing wood's natural movement. The true cost of this longevity was immense human effort. A single cathedral roof might require months of oil application, layer upon patient layer, craftsmen working from scaffolding in all weather. Yet medieval builders understood something we're relearning. Initial investment in proper preservation saved entire structures from premature ruin, protecting not just timber, but the stone and communities they supported. Modern Echoes, Reviving Ancient Wisdom Today, today's conservationists increasingly turn to these forgotten methods when restoring historic structures, recognising that medieval linseed treatments often preserve original wood better than replacement with synthetic sealed modern timber. The revival isn't mere nostalgia but practical acknowledgement that pre-industrial craftsmen solved problems we're still struggling with. Creating durable, sustainable, breathable wood protection that doesn't depend on petrochemicals or generate toxic waste. For those willing to try, the method remains accessible. Quality boiled linseed oil, applied in thin coats to clean, dry wood, allowed to cure between applications, creates protection that improves with age. It's labour-intensive, demanding patience our convenience-addicted culture often lacks, but the results speak across centuries. This is the lesson embedded in every surviving timber that medieval craftsmen, working without laboratories or chemical formulas, achieved preservation mastery through observation, experience and respect for materials. They understood that protecting wood wasn't about dominating nature but working within its properties, creating harmony between human need and natural process. If this glimpse into medieval engineering genius sparked your curiosity about how our ancestors survived and thrived against impossible odds, hit that like button and subscribe to The Lost Tactician. Share this with anyone who appreciates the forgotten brilliance of pre-industrial problem solving. Every week we're unearthing more tactical wisdom from history's most resourceful survivors. Until next time, remember, the solutions we need might already exist waiting in the knowledge we've too casually discarded.